Hello, I'm Donna Rankin, the GSA Smart Pay 3 Master Contract Contracting Officer from the Office of Professional Services and Human Capital Categories of the General Services Administration. My training today will cover the GSA Smart Pay 3 Master Contract Basics. An overview of the GSA Smart Pay 3 Master Contract. More than 560 federal government agencies and organizations obtain charge card products and services through GSA Smart Pay 3 Master Contract. Federal government agencies and organizations issue task orders against the GSA Smart Pay 3 Master Contract for charge card products and services from one of two contractor banks. The banks are US Bank and Citibank. Agencies and organizations pay no direct fees for using the GSA Smart Pay program. There are four business lines under the GSA Smart Pay 3 Master Contract. The business lines include purchase. Purchase is used to procure order and pay for supplies and services. Travel. Travel is used for official travel and travel related expenses. The fleet business line is used for fuel, maintenance, and repair of government owned and operated vehicles. The integrated business line combines two or more business lines on a single account. There are a number of benefits to using the GSA Smart Pay program as a payment solution. Those benefits include safety and transparency. The GSA Smart Pay program provides secure solutions for efficient payment transactions. Customers also have access to tools that promote increased transparency through access to spend and performance data. Electronic access to data. Through GSA Smart Pay Contractor Bank online systems, account managers and cardholders have immediate access to complete transaction level data, helping to mitigate fraud, waste, and abuse. Refunds. Agencies and organizations have the opportunity to earn refunds based on a single rate that considers both volume of spend and speed of pay. Minimums vary by contract line item number and business line. In fiscal year 2019, agencies and organizations received over $422 million in refunds. Worldwide acceptance. Through the use of commercial payment infrastructure, customers are able to use GSA Smart Pay solutions anywhere in the world where mer merchants accept cards. Pool. The benefit of the pool pro task order uh, benefit is favorable pricing. Expanding point of sale recognition through strategic sourcing and GSA schedule contracts is a benefit of using the Smart Pay program. Master contract life cycle. The GSA Smart Pay 3 master contract is an indefinite delivery, indefinite quantity contract with a 13 year period of performance. The contract has a base period and three three-year option periods. The master contract was awarded in August of 2017. The transitional period of performance was from August 2017 through November 2018. The transitional period allows time for agencies and organizations to evaluate contractor proposal submissions, select the Smart Pay 3 bank, integrate systems, card delivery, and account activation. The transactional period, considered as the go-live date to begin performance of the contract, the four-year ba four base period for the Smart Pay 3 contract is from November of 30, 2018 through November of 29, of 2022. The period of performance for the first option period is November 30th, 2022, 2022 through November 29th of 2025. The period of performance for the second option period is November 30th, 2025 through November 29, 2028. The period of performance for the third option period is November 30th, 2028 through November 29th of 2031. And that's 
depicted below in the chart. And as you can see that we're in the, uh, the, base, the base year, um, we're almost halfway there through the base year. Agencies and organizations should assess GSA Smart Pay programs to determine if the program is meeting their needs. Task order types. There are four task order types under the GSA Smart Pay 3 Master Contract, and these include standard, tailored, tag along, and pool. The standard task order contains the same requirements as the master contract. The tailored task order includes agency and organization customer specific requirements. The tag along task order uses uses another agency's organization's established contract vehicle so that it may take advantage of that task order's pre-negotiated terms, rates, and conditions. As a result, all administrative responsibilities of the task order are placed on one agency or organization. The pool task order occurs when, occurs when two or more agencies and organizations collaborate to issue one task order which will meet the multiple agency organization needs. Currently, the GSA Smart Pay Program Office manages the pool task order for smaller agencies and organizations and tribes and tribal organizations. The pricing structure of the GSA Smart Pay 3 Master Contract. There are two types of products, service products and service offerings under the GSA Smart Pay 3 Master Contract. Tier 1 are required or core requirements and Tier 2 value added or optional requirements. The tiers and the products and services under each are found in the Master Contract under Section C3.1.1, Tier 1 Required Products and Service Offerings and Section C.3.1.2, Tier 2 value added product and service offerings, respectively. Tier 1 and Tier 2 differ in that Tier 1 contains both not separately priced and separately priced items and is the same for both contractors, while Tier 2 contains only separately priced contract line items numbers, which are CLINs, and may vary by contractor. Tier 1 products and services are the same for both contractors. They are the core requirements for this program. They include products such as chip cards, declining balance cards, foreign currency cards, ghost cards, single use accounts, and virtual cards, and non-carded solutions like convenience checks and e-payables. These are the payment solutions used to initiate the majority of the transactions under the GSA Smart Pay program. Services under this Tier 1 CLIN include things that item, services such as 24-hour electronic access system, customer service, email and short message service alerts, net billing, and real-time web assistance. The services support the payment solutions. Tier 2 products and services vary by contractor. These optional items augment or add value to the payment solution processes found in Tier 1, or maybe a separate payment solution or service that is a proprietary offering and unique to that contractor. Under Tier 1, each core product or service listed are further designated in Section C.3.1.1 as either a not separately priced or separately priced offering. Under Tier 2, all products and services are separately priced offerings. All business lines include standard transactions, large ticket transactions, and e-payable supplier-initiated payments as separate refunds listed under Tier 1 contract line item numbers. For these contract CLINs and all associated sub-CLINs, contractors are required to propose a refund amount no less than the minimum stated that takes into account all costs associated with meeting the contract requirements. Not separately priced uh, is a unit or lump sum pricing that considers and includes the cost of all identified contract requirements under contract line item.
GSA Smart Pay payment solutions. There are a total of 21 tier, tier one product and service offerings in the GSA Smart Pay 3 master contract. A few of the tier one product and service offerings, core requirements included in the master contract are identified on the next two slides. They are mandatory offerings in which each contractor had to bid on to receive a contract. The first one is accounts payable file review. The contractor provides an accounts payable file review after task order award, unless otherwise specified by an agency and organization. The contractor completes the autumn accounts payable file review with the information to be provided by the agency, organiza agency and organization. We also have chip cards, a chip, a card product with a microprocessor chip embedded into the card to provide increased payment security. The chip creates a unique one-time code known as a cryptogram with each transaction. We have convenience checks. The convenience checks are a contractor provided instrument that is written, dated, and signed against a card and or account within established dollar limits. Convenience checks are primarily to be used for merchants who do not accept other GSA Smart Pay payment solutions and in accordance with agency organization policies. Declining balance cards. Declining balance cards function similarly to a traditional charge card. However, limits do not refresh each month. Declining balance cards are a central liability and those are paid for by the agency organization, much like the purchase or travel card or the travel card centrally billed accounts. These cards can be applied for a specific purpose or for a specific time period and with a predetermined credit limit. Credit limits can either be set as needed or the card becomes inactive once the balance is used. Email short message service alert services provides for automatic email or SMS alerts at agency organization requests for purchase, travel, fleet, and integrated transactions. The alerts are to be sent to card and payment program managers for example, the agency organization program coordinator, approving officials, and to account holders. The notifications shall at a minimum include account holder name and amount unless otherwise indicated at the agency organization task order level. ePayable supplier initiated payments provides processes for electronically connecting suppliers or other merchants to the government supply chain and or back-end payment systems. The solution provides a means to accept agency organization payment files used for disbursement against designated accounts for those transactions. The solution does not include virtual cards, single-use accounts, ghost cards, or other products and services defined as elsewhere in the master contract. Foreign currency cards, cards and or other equivalent payment solutions, if applicable, in foreign currencies. All administrative functions, including billing and settlement, occur in the foreign currency design by the agency organization at the task order level. Ghost cards, provides a charge card number that is specific to an agency organization or an entity within an agency organization. The card allows for an agency to consolidate purchases to a single vendor under one account, aiding in reconciliation, as well as transaction oversight. GSA Smart Pay Tax Advantage Travel Card Account provides a means for agencies to obtain tax exemption at the point of sale for rental cars and lodging. Continuation or continuation of the tier one products and service offerings. There is the interchange based government to government transactions. These are payments between different agencies, intergovernmental or within the same entity, same agency, intragovernmental. Such, trans, such transactions are characterized as low risk with low retrieval and low char, char, chargeback rates. 
However, constraints such as interchange costs and policy may limit these types of transactions through a GSA smart pay solution. Each agency, agency should become familiar with the Department of Treasury policy when considering the use of the government to government offering. Mobile applications provide the ability to access electronic access systems, pay invoices, receive text and email alerts, and view statement and payment information over a mobile device. Mobile payments allow agencies to make secure payments utilizing a mobile device at the point of sale. Net billing, the process of ensuring that merchant discounts or refunds offered are deducted at the point of sale and guarantee such discount arrangements. Non-interchange-based government-to-government transactions, transactions that occur through non-traditional payment channels that do not generate interchange and that may include some government-to-government -government transactions. Single-use accounts allow any agency to utilize a virtual account number for a single payment. The limit on each account is set to the specific payment amount. Tokenization, the use of a secure unique token in place of a 16-digit account number to provide extra security for transactions and virtual cards. Virtual cards are one-time use account numbers that may be used during a limited time for a limited amount and possibly for a specific vendor. And examples include single-use accounts and ghost cards. Payment solutions continue. This slide includes the tier two product and service offerings, otherwise known as value added requirements. Tier two products and services may enhance or facilitate the card program for each respective business line. Offered products and services shall use commercial terms and conditions and commercial pricing unless otherwise specified. The technologies must be offered at the master contract level in order to make them available at the agency organization task order level. The master contract will contain ceiling prices for value added products and services. There are a total of 14 tier two product and service offerings in the GSA Smart Pay 3 master contract. This slide includes 10 of those available tier two offerings. There is additional authorization controls Additional authorization controls that would add value to the GSA, GSA Smart Pay program over and above those specified in Section C.8.14 authorization controls. Agencies and organizations will determine the need for additional controls at the task order level. Additional data mining tools includes additional data mining tools over and above those specified as core requirements in Section C.7. Point four point one data mining. Additional data mining tools could be capable of accepting rules-based perimeter parameters to include specific rules for the data analysis at the task order level. After hours roadside assistance provides customer support and service during after hours and holidays. Customers Call centers should be available to handle after our calls on Monday through Fridays from 8 p.m. to 7 a.m. local time and all day on weekends and federal holidays. After our roadside assistant provides after hours support as required to ensure coordination of the driver's call to the appropriate roadside assistance program. Combined charge card and identification card technology, provides the ability and functionality to combine payment solutions and personnel identity cards into a single card. The solution should provide products or services that allow the merging of these functionalities onto one card, such as programming government issued identification cards with payment solution functionality. Commercially offered convenience services provides commercial convenience services such as extended warranty programs, guaranteed return programs, and merchant discount programs. 
emerging technology. Because this contract is written for so long, this was built in uh, to, as an advance to um, incorporate advances that may become available to the commercial market. It allows the contractor to provide emerging technologies that facilitate or enhance the payment solutions programs in the master contract and for use of agency organizations at the task order level. E buyer, e, I'm sorry, e payable buyer initiated payment, a type of transaction that requires no action by the supplier, no point of sales terminals or other hardware and or software required to receive payment. E payable straight through processing, an automated payment transaction processing service with the purchasing organization sends the payment file delivered directly to the contractor's acquiring institution. The networks process the payment automatically on behalf of the contractor and deposit the funds directly into the contractor's bank account. International Fleet Solution provides products and solutions designed for use outside of the United States, Alaska, and Hawaii. Solutions can either utilize a closed loop network that provides level three data or an open loop network that does not guarantee level three data. Telematics provides a fleet vehicle tracking technology solution to assist fleet managers in identifying misuse and abuse faster. It tracks drivers and vehicles with factors such as speed, as well as global positioning satellite location and reduce fuel consumption and finds the lowest gas prices based on GPS location. Payment liability. There are two types of accounts under the GSA Smart Pay 3 contract. They are centrally billed accounts known as CBAs and individually billed accounts known as IBAs. A CBA is an account established by the contractor at the request of the agency organization to pay for official government purchases for which the customer agency organization is directly billed, such as a, using the billing account and liable for making the payment. All purchase and fleet accounts are centrally billed. Travel accounts used for airfare and other travel related transactions may also be centrally billed. Agencies and organizations will specify at the task order level which travel and integrated cards will be centrally billed accounts. An IBA is a contractor issued account used by authorized individuals to pay for official travel and travel related expenses for which the contractor bills the account holder and for which the individual is liable to pay. The cardholder is liable for payment. The government reimburses employees only for authorized and allowable expenses. And employees are responsible for amounts charged in excess of the allowable reimbursement. Refunds. What is a refund? A refund is a payment made by the contractor to the agency based on the dollar amount or spend volume during a specified time period. In the GSA Smart Pay 3 master contract, refunds are expressed in terms of basis points or cents per transaction, depending on the contract line item number, the CLIN. A basis points is 1 one hundredth of 1% expressed as 0.01% or 0.0001%. Refunds under the GSA Smart Pay 3 contract are expressed as a single rate that takes into consideration both spend volume and speed of pay. Under the GSA Smart Pay 2 contract, the old contract, we had sales and productivity refunds. Sales refunds were based on spend volume and productivity refunds were based on the speed of pay using gross refund tables and velocity tables. Separate productivity calculations created unique issues when there were discrepancies in determining the actual speed of pay and the starting balances for the productivity calculations. These calculations were complicated and the outcome of those discrepancies resulted in audits and additional payments to the agencies and organizations. 
typically we found that agencies don't pay in one day, one month, 30 days the next month, and five days the following month. Over the life of a task order, there is generally very little variation. This lack of variation equated to less risk and less incentive to provide refunds for productivity once the spend volume and speed and or frequency of pay by an agency is known. Under the GSA Smart Pay 3 contract, the approach was to take advantage of this lack of variation and simplify to a single refund rate structure that includes sales volume and average speed of pay. This guarantees a consistent refund within the payment performance assumptions set forth by the agency in their task order request for proposal and eliminates the complicated compli calculations. But note that productivity or speed of pay is not gone under this simplified single refund rate structure. It is still very much a part of the single rate structure. It was also noted that agencies, GSA found that agencies with, were concerned with the new single refund structure and they thought the refunds would be less under the Smart Pay 3 contracts. However, this, does, this has not been the case. In most cases, most cases, the refunds are the same or higher under the GSA Smart Pay 3 contract than they were under the Smart Pay 2 contract. A refund may also include additional payments from the contractor to the agency organization to correct improper or erroneous refund payments or make an invoice adjustments. Refunds versus fees. The GSA Smart Pay 3 contract includes refund based pricing and fee based pricing. Refund based pricing in the GSA Smart Pay 3 master contract is for products and services that generate interchange. Interchange is a fee paid by the merchant's financial institutions to the card issuing bank for processing its customer merchant transaction typically expressed in a percentage of the total transaction amount passed on to the merchant through the merchant financial institution's fees. If interchange is generated, the refund is part of that fee given back to the agency organization. Refund-based pricing is also expressed in terms of basis points or cents per transactions. The minimum refund that must, and it's also the minimum refund that must be paid to agencies for use of the product or service. The GSA Smart Pay 3 contractors must provide the minimum refund rate or higher when the product or service is ordered by the agency organization at the task order level. The Smart Pay 3 contractors may not propose less than the refund rate for any contract line item as found in, the mas in their master contract. Contractors may take into consideration historical data provided by the agency organization and the task order request for proposal to, to offer higher refund rates under the GSA Smart Pay 3 contract. Fee-based pricing in the GSA Smart Pay 3 contract is for products and services that do not generate interchange. Therefore, no refunds are applied against the spend on these contract line item numbers, the CLINs, and that would include um, one of the uh, tier one uh, requirements such as convenience checks. Fee-based pricing is also expressed in terms of minimum refunds, maximum hourly rates, or maximum fixed fees, net basis points, for the specified product or service offered. The Smart Pay 3 contractor may provide discounts on these items at the task order level based on historical information of the specific agency organization. Discounts are not required, but they may be offered by the contractor. The GSA Smart Pay 3 contractors may not propose more than the fee for any CLIN as found in their master contract. So it's the ceiling 
and they cannot go higher than that, but they can offer a discount and to the agency organization and go lower than the fee that's proposed in the master contract. Calculation of refunds. Refunds are calculated and aggregated for quarterly remittance in accordance with the GSA Smart Pay 3 Master Contract Section B.3.3 Calculation of Refunds. Steps to calculate those refunds include determining the net charge volume. The net charge volume is the sum of all purchases, including convenience checks, ATM, cash advances, and other fee generating products and services, less merchant credits. You also identify convenience check spend from the net charge volume in the calculation. Then you also determine the gross credit losses. Gross credit, gross credit losses are the balances on individually billed accounts that reach the prescribed number of calendar days past the closing date on the statement of account in which the charges appeared for the reporting period without adjustments as stated at the task order level. Then you subtract convenience check spend and gross credit losses from net charge volume to determine refund eligible to determine the refund eligible net charge volume. The refund eligible net charge volume is the sum of purchases with eligible transaction codes included to calculate refunds, ATM, cash advances, and other fee generating products, services, less merchant credits. And then finally, you calculate the gross refund and GSA contract access fee, otherwise known as the CAF, to determine net, the net refund amount. The gross refund amount is comprised of the GS, GSA contract access fee and the refund amount paid to the agency organization. It's actually the refund amount before the deduction of the GSA contract access fee. The net refund amount is the payment from the contractor to the agency organization based on the dollar or spend volume during each reporting period. And as stated in section B.3.3 of the master contract, there are examples of how to, a basic example of how to calculate the refunds under the GSA Smart Pay 3 contract. Additional task order requirements. This section, section H.12.12 of the master contract uh, provides information on additional task order requirements. If, an age, if a participating agency or organization develops additional requirements for products and services not offered under their current task order during a period of performance of the master contract, the agency organization will first consider their current GSA Smart Pay 3 contractor for those requirements. Because they may be there, but the agency just chose not to include them under in their task order. If the agency's organization's current contractor cannot fulfill that requirement, the agency organization will give consideration to the other GSA Smart Pay 3 contractor bank before competing the requirements outside of the master contract. And in most cases, this will probably um, refer to a tier two requirement that one, one bank may have offered that another one may not have offered, but the agency would still like to look into to those services. If the agency organization makes a written determination as required by agency organization procurement policies that additional requirements cannot be met by any GSA Smart Pay 3 contractor bank or that the requirements are out of scope of the master contract, the agency organization may procure the requirements outside of the master contract. So there are remedies there, but at first the agency must consider their, their contractor bank that they made their award to under the GSA Smart Pay 3 contract, if their contractor bank cannot provide that service, then you consider the second bank under the con Smart Pay 3 contract. And if neither one of those banks can provide it, then, and it's, or the requirement is considered to be out of, with, 
out of scope of the master contract requirements, then the agency can procure it op the service they require open market. I have a question to test your knowledge of the Smart Pay 3 master contract. As many of you know, the master contract, it's a very lengthy contract, but there's a few things that stand out um, that every individual that's using the Smart Pay 3 program should be aware of. So the first question is a true or false question. My agency organization has very unique needs. Therefore, the terms and conditions of the GSA Smart Pay 3 master contract can be amended or deleted by a task order. Take a few seconds to think about the question and your response. The answer is false. In accordance with contract law, the GSA Smart Pay 3 master contract cannot be amended or deleted by a task order. However, customers may include requirements in task orders if requirements are within scope of the products and services offered under the master contract. And I hope everyone got that question correct. Master contract restrictions. Master contract restrictions are included under Section H.12.13 of the GSA Smart Pay 3 contract. Those restrictions include task orders may not increase the scope, period, or maximum value of the master contract under which the task order is issued, unique to the travel card program, a standard or tailored task order may not split agency requirements between individually and centrally billed accounts. If an agency places a task order, they may not issue one task order for individually billed accounts with one contractor and another task order for centrally billed accounts with a different contractor. They must all be under the same task order. Ordering agencies and organizations shall not alter GSA's contract access fee as part of the task order award process. Another question to test your knowledge of the GSA Smart Pay 3 master contract. This is a yes or no question. GSA Smart Pay 3 contractor banks are encouraged to propose improvement to the services, features, or other requirements of the master contract. Take a few seconds to think about the question and your response. The answer is yes. Section H.16, Service Improvements of the Master Contract, encourages the banks to propose improvements that may save money, improve technology or performance, or for any other purpose which which presents a service advantage to the government. And this has already occurred under the Smart Pay 3 contracts. Actually, it was immediately after award of the contracts in August of 2017. Both banks proposed a, a service enhancement to be considered under their respective contracts. That information was reviewed and approved by GSA and was added to the list of uh, tier two services under the um, U.S. Bank and Citibank contracts. Service improvements. After contract award, the government may solicit and the contractor is encouraged to propose independently improvements to the services, features, or other requirements of the master contract. But in accordance with GSA Smart Pay 3 Master Contract Section H.16, Service Improvements. The improvements may be proposed to save money, to improve technology or performance, or for any other purpose which presents a service advantage to the government. Proposed service improvements that are acceptable to the government will be processed mo as modifications to the master contract, which is what happened in the case where I mentioned in the previous slide 
about immediately after award that we um, each bank had one service improvement that they wanted to add to their their tier two requirements, and that was done by modification. Pilot programs. In accordance with the GSA Smart Pay 3 Master Contract Section H.16 Service Improvements, customized services proposed or requested as pilot programs shall include substantial modification or changes to core products and services within the master contract. Those services may run for a period of time shorter than the master contract or task order period of performance. They may have additional requirements for evaluation, feedback, and reporting to substantiate program viability. And they are priced separately as negotiated between the GSA contracting officer and the contractor. Pilot programs for GSA. Customized services at the master contract level may include but not be limited to pilot programs. Those programs are initiated by GSA with government-wide applicability. The customized, it could, it could include customized training materials for payment solution programs. It could include pilot or demonstration of new processes, which is very important because, like I said, that the Period of performance on this contract is 13 years, so a lot of new solutions and processes may come up. And in some cases, we may want to test those first to see if it makes sense to add those to the contract, to the master contract, to be available to all agencies. And it also could include contractor suggested or government suggested service and improvements. So it could be something, a new service that's offered commercially, and it could be proposed by the government. Or, it's, or it could be something that the contractor proposes to us. So it works both ways. Pilot programs for agencies and organizations. Customized services for agencies and organizations may include, but not be limited to, customized agency organization specific training materials, production and submittal of agency organization 1099 information to the Internal Revenue Service, pilot or demonstration of new processes, contractor suggested or government suggested service improvements, priced separately as negotiated between the agency and organization and the contractor, and agency organizations may not modify or change the terms and condition of the of the master contract under a pilot program. Program stakeholders. You see in the slide a graphic illustration of the programmatic relationship between GSA Smart Pay stakeholders. We start in the middle of the chart with the Center for Charge Card Management. The Center for Charge Card Management provides overall program management and advocacy. We have agencies and organizations. They are the, uh, they use the CART products and services to support the mission, to support their missions. We have banks that provide charge CART products and services through GSA, GSA Smart Pay 3 Master Contracts, and they issue the charge cards. We have the network brands, which provide the transaction network for the GSA Smart Pay 3 charge cards. And finally, the Office of Management and Budget has oversight of the government-wide charge card program. GSA Smart Pay Bank Responsibilities. Contractor banks partner with brands to provide solutions under the master contract. A few of these services include commercial billing and payment systems, a single refund rate, which considers both volume of spend and speed of pay, internal controls for mitigating fraud and abuse, electronic systems for statements, payment history, and account information. For example, the contractor's electronic access system. Training and training support, which may include participating in the GSA Smart Pay annual training form 
and providing agency organization training. The training may be specific to the business line provided by the customer bank. Required reports, data analysis and support, and assistance with audits and investigations. For audits, the contractor shall assist any authorized unit of the government or tribal organization by providing reasonable access to all GSA smart pay, administrative, financial, and management data. For investigative assistance, the contractor shall assist any authorized unit concerning alleged wrongdoing or suspected fraud, waste, misuse, or abuse by agency organization employees, or those entities doing business with the government or tribal organizations. The final question in the presentation to test your knowledge of the GSA Smart Pay 3 Master Contract, the true or false question. GSA Smart Pay cardholders have responsibilities for managing GSA Smart Pay solutions appropriately. Take a few seconds to think about the question and your response. The answer is true. In accordance with the master contract, cardholders are required to comply with rules and responsibilities outlined in the GSA Smart, Smart Pay cardholder training and agency organization specific training. Contracting officer leading practices to support GSA Smart Pay programs in agency organizations, contracting officers are encouraged to understand the establishment of task orders in accordance with the FAR in section 16.505. They are responsible for to develop and award agency organization task orders under the GSA Smart Pay program, and they serve as the ordering official for agencies and organizations, and they maintain lines of communication with agency organization program coordinators and contracting officers representative responsibilities. Record retention. In accordance with section C.7.2.4, record retention and retrieval of the master contract, banks are required to maintain electronic records of all transactions for a period of six years after final contract payment. Final contract payment is defined as the final payment for the particular charge under each agency's task order. Online access should be provided to GSA and the agency organization for six years after the concurrence of each transaction. Review and approval and reconciliation data are considered to be parts of the transaction and should be subject to the same six-year record retention requirement. There are four types of transitions under the GSA Smart Pay 3 master contract. Startup implementation transition is in section C.7, I'm sorry, C.2.2.1. The master contract startup implementation transition requirements are the processes required of the contractor upon master contract award. The transition includes but is not limited to the GSA Smart Pay Master Contract kickoff form, presentation packages, and preparation to begin transaction processing, transition from previous contract, implementation of services, technology transitions, and post-contract transition. Technology advanced transition is included under section C.2.2.1.3. And this gives the contractor an opportunity during a transition um, for technology solution to another, to transition from one technology solution to another with the same contractor, and that the contractor should ensure that the transition disruption should be minimized. Updates or new technologies may include subject agency organization program systems for review, audits, or certification and accreditation as specified under Section C.8 security requirements. Agency organization transition is under section C.2.2.2 of the master contract, and that includes the startup and implementation transition requirements. Those processes are required of the contractor upon task order award and include, but are not limited to task order processes, determining whether it's standard or tailored, task order competition and award, preparation to begin transaction processing, transition from previous contract and implementation of services, 
and then the final one, which is pretty far off now, seeing that we're only going into year two of the master contract, but that is the post-contract transition, which is in section C.2.2.1.4 of the master contract. And at the end of the master contract's period of performance, the contractor shall monitor and manage a cooperative, orderly, and seamless transition to a successor. The contractor, contractor shall upon the CO's written notice furnish phase-out services for up to 18 months prior to the expiration date of the contract, and they shall provide sufficient experienced personnel during the phase-in and phase-out period to ensure that there is no decrease in the quality of services provided under the master contract and task orders. General Contact information. The general contact information is provided for the GSA Smart Pay 3 Program Support Center, manned by team members from the Smart Pay Program Office, the Center for Charge Card Management, as well as it, this slide includes customer service contact information for Citibank and US Bank. This information may also be found on the GSA Smart Pay website. Additional GSA Smart Pay courses available during the virtual form include advanced purchase card management, the GSA Smart Pay Fleet Management Essentials, GSA Smart Pay Online Tools, GSA Smart Pay Program Update, GSA Smart Pay Purchase Management Essentials, GSA Smart Pay Transition Management Essentials, GSA Smart Pay Tax, Leading Practices and Lessons Learned for State Taxes, Strategic Payment Solutions, and Use of Data Analytics for Effective Program Oversight. Although my contact information is on the slide, I also need, would like to make you aware of the remaining SmartPay acquisition, acquisition team members. Those team members include Nyla Javed, Katrina Garrett, and Rosalind Cherry. That this concludes the briefing portion of this session. Thank you for your time and attention.